Bienvenidos. Do you see a Nick? Oh, hey, Nick. <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? Good. I just, I, with all the, have you seen any of the Blue's Clues stuff that's been happening yes. the last few days? With that, I was in like a Blue's Clues, Dora the Explorer kind of zone for that one. So hello, everyone. Welcome back. Yes. Um, we're not Steve. We're not Blue's Clues, but we are Office Hours, and uh, we're super proud of you, too. Um, yeah. And Keita Jones asked right off the bat, Hi, Kita. One, hello, welcome to Office Hours. Haven't seen your name in chat before. Nice to see you. Two, yes. who did the intro? I don't know, but Wade it's, might know. It's so cool. It's yeah. so cool. Wade, if you know, someone knows, uh, we will get you that answer. Uh, but hello, welcome to Adobe Office Hours. Nick, there's a lot of new faces in chat. Do you want to tell them, them where they are and what this is? Yeah, you are at Office Hours, and this is our Friday session. We're here every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time on Adobe Live. And uh, this is our fourth, fifth something season. We, uh, we determined that last week. I can't remember. I think I think it's a sixth season because we talked about having six, six, yeah, six seasons in a movie. That's, that was it. And yes, we're there, six oh, seasons, that was it, yeah. Which we're about and to we tell just, you about the movie, I think. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but what are we doing this semester, Nick? What, what is the show all about? This is our back to school session. So we are taking all the courses that you would have taken in school and we're finding ways to relate them back to graphic design, creativity, you name it. Um, having a blast with it. And we have a good one this week. What are we talking about? This week this we're week? talking about, it's hanging out down there, uh, history. We're talking about how to craft compelling stories. We're gonna give you a little bit of context for design history. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, creating a structure to your stories. We're gonna talk about uh, good, uh, uh, writing techniques. We're going to talk about writing a brand story, creating a brand story visuals. It's all about history from like yeah. nine different angles. I, you know, leave it to us to figure a way to do that. It's true. I love the idea that it, it's kind of branched out into a lot of these different things. So hopefully what the, the, the whole goal of here is to show you how it has shown storytelling throughout the years and how we can help you guys out doing that a little bit better with your work. Yep, and so this season we are covering a different topic every single week. This week is history. Next week we are talking about mathematics and we're gonna be going into Illustrator, InDesign and showing you how to do charts and graphs. Uh, so if you are someone who is into math, if you are somehow landed here and you're not a designer, you're just like, I love math, stick around for next week. Uh, we're gonna be teaching yeah. you some awesome tools <laughs> and how you can leverage the Adobe tools to make your math maybe a little bit uh, easier. I almost said yeah. Andrew because I read my name. It's so guys, it's I, yeah. so hard to read and talk at the same time. Um, I can't wait to meet creatives who love math. Right, that's going to be a ball. Right, so we'll, we'll we'll check that out next week. For now, sure. Now, Nick, we're talking about six seasons in a movie. This is our sixth season. W yes. What's this movie that we're talking about? I know it's kind of like going to the big leagues, right? We ha are in the middle of working on our content for Adobe Max. Um, can't tell you a little bit about what we're doing, but um, I don't think it's ever been done. I don't think it's ever been done. I think that we're definitely like charting yeah. a new course here. So we will have details for you in the next few weeks about what's coming at Adobe Max. But what we want you to do now is go sign up. Uh, go sign up, register for Adobe Max, get a schedule going, um, and just know that the the Office Hours movie, the six seasons and the movie, uh, we're gonna be doing some crazy awesome stuff at Max just for you here. Um, yeah. And for all the people that are hanging out in our Discord, which, what is that, Nick? That is right there in our placement so yes. check it out we have such a great community oh, of folks there. there there it is wait there it is it's uh, over here it's, oh. it's only over there i don't have it on the other side uh, i thought here. i did i'm gonna point to it as well is it showing up got it it's there it's there it's there it's, there you go yeah Go there. Uh, check out our Discord. That's where we got to go. Yeah, that's the yeah. place that you can get connected, and that's the place where uh, some things will be happening eventually with uh, something. All right. Oh, wait. Someone said they're not creative enough to go to Max. There's no, no. such thing. You're There's creative no enough to go thing. to Max. Everyone's creative <laughs> enough to go to Max. Max is just fun. Just, like, come hang out. There's, like, really cool people. It's going to be great. Just register. It's going to be, it's, like, free. It's online. It's free. Jeremy exactly. Scott's going to be there, who's an incredible fashion designer. That'll be fun. Um, there's going to be a whole bunch of people. Keenan Thompson's going to be there. we got Draplin. Uh, yeah. The guys from Breaking Bad. Yes. Like, just about everybody's going to be, gonna so be fun, there. Guys. Why not? Um, hey, Kevin. What's right? up? Hello, Kevin. Nice to see you. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, kind of hop in. I don't think we have any more announcement things to do, but we do have some things that we want to talk to you about today. Uh, we had someone comment on one of our episodes. Did these guys ever stop talking? And the answer is no. 
Uh, so we're just going to continue that. Uh, so hello. Yes, everyone should go to Max. Seriously. There we go. Lisa says. And yes, you got me at free. You got me at free, too. Um, I, I, I agree. Uh, I all agree. Right. Nick. Yes. What are we talking about today? Where do we start with this one? Like, I think it should be a timeline, but we've kind of jumbled our history timeline a little bit. Yes. But uh, where should we start? Are we starting with um, our first few slides here? Uh, yeah. Let's start. Let's start here. Let's. I. I feel like I didn't transition that well. Let's try this. All right, everyone. We're about to move into our talk and take you back yes. to school as we cover history in second period. Yes. All right, now in we're here. In so many different ways. There we go. Yes. Boom. We, we, we got there eventually. All right. Um, so we are going to talk through history, and we're going to start out with a little bit of a timeline. Nick's going to kind of walk through, and I'm going to kind of just give color commentary. I taught design history for a long time, so there are so many stories, and we're going to have a fun yeah. game maybe at the end if we have time, but I'll kind of toss stuff in as we go to just bring you up to speed on what, what history is, especially within design. Yeah, and where it comes from and all of these things that we are using currently today, where did they start from? What kind of things encouraged them or inspired them to even start? And here's a great example. I know like, I think in a few history ones we did prior in another season, I know you handled a lot of stuff prior to maybe like the 1600s, right? We went through a lot of that, that really cool stuff. So kind of taking it from this point on and looking at what happened in the 1620s, that's about when the first print advertising ever happened. And the whole point here was is because you had these print presses, they were able to make sure that this was something that could be included in the publications. So when you look at this, imagine the first things that had to be looked at when you were putting together the first advertisement, right? Like image, headline, uh, call to action, a uh, little subject line, maybe a, a brief paragraph or two. And here's the most simplest one. And you can see the beginnings of where it started. It's kind of neat to see, like, even how we throw back to like vintage stuff. It ha it's oh, there for a reason. That's right? my zone. Yes. And it's something that uh, you can kind of track through history, the progression of that, right? We saw the, yeah. the black and white type that was probably placed by hand. Then we got to chromal lithography that we saw there that it really was all about capturing attention. And it really always has been about capturing attention and trying yes. to tell a story, right? That's what we're doing storytelling today is we were trying to tell it with words. And then we realized we could use images. And then we realized we could use colors and then we could reuse yeah. photography and it kind of just kept going. So pushing forward, we're getting into 1903, Nick. Uh, oh boy, that's not the right button. There it is. What happens in 1903? There we go. This was kind of when the first, think about it, the first graphic design agency was kind of born. And it's so neat to think that with more and more companies recognizing the benefit of this idea of graphic design, it was only a matter of time before someone would like emerge and become one. And these are three examples from, I'm going to say it's Wiener Work Workstate. Yes. Yes. Very German. Look at that. Oh, love it. But look at those, look at those designs. I mean, that is wonderful stuff. And if you think of the evolution with what we've taken from 1903, where we went in like the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and everything, and then where we are now, we're almost going back to this minimalist thing like they were showing us examples of back in 1903. Yep. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and I think that when we look at history in general, history is all about trends and revolts, like across the board. Um, if you're looking at any kind of uh, political movement, any kind of social activism, any kind of design art movement, uh, it's yes. about kind of a revolt against what was before it, and then that becomes the trend, and then someone revolts against that trend and starts a new yes. trend. Uh, and so it's interesting to see stuff like this loop back around because it really yeah. is just trending back and back and back and then revolt and trend, revolt and trend, and revolt and trend. So as we move forward, Nick, we land on something that we've talked about a little bit before here, and yeah. that's the Bauhaus. Tell us about the Bauhaus. I'm wondering if, I can't remember when we did talk about it, but I'm, I'm thinking- oh, You know what? Yeah, we didn't talk about it. I talked about it. That's where my brain is. So uh, ah, there which, you go. Let's see. Today's Friday. We might have talked about it today on the Daily Creative yeah. Challenge. So uh, we're on a replay for Daily Creative Challenge. So ah, if you are doing the you Illustrator go. Daily Creative Challenges, I am teaching them, which I forgot about right until now. It's on replay. Um, and we are covering design history. Every single day is a different movement in design history. So if you want to continue this lesson, do the Daily Creative Challenges uh, with Illustrator, behance.net slash challenge slash Illustrator. Um, and go. we're doing all those. And I believe that today was the Bauhaus. So Nick, tell us about the Bauhaus. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's funny how seeing everybody's popping in some other tidbits of... Uh, 
Harley Davidson was born in 1903. That's a cool little fact. <laughs> oh yes, if you guys if you guys have historical facts, Tell us please more. drop them in. We love to call oh, them out. Add the color. I think I, I, I'm sure you might have the same story. When I saw the Bauhaus stuff in art history, everything came into everything. Just like I, I get it now. Like to me, they were the first. It was the first movement I saw that I I thought was modern yet th looking back at it being founded in 1919 and you look at how incredibly modern and different and groundbreaking it was back in the day it was the first kind of central force behind popularization of modern style like it was the first time someone was like let's put together and put the driving forces together it was architecture it was art it was graphic design the buildings are incredible like you see some of these buildings from there and you think how how on earth was that in 1919 it looks like something that should be out in 10 years from now right like it's a major influence for me i, I i'm you same way yeah i think that it's interesting because when we think of 1919 a lot of people go back to uh, art deco right everyone's like the roaring yes. 20s and it's weird to think that like yes that was happening but also bauhaus was happening at the same time um yes. and i think that if you want to do some more research and look into the history of bauhaus there are a couple of different styles that kind of came out of bauhaus so art concrete uh which is kind of this image that you see in the middle here uh by max bill is probably the guy to look up for that, uh, just M-A-X-B-I-L-L. -L. Um, and then another style that was, um, it's distigial, but specifically mm. Theo von Dusburg. And Theo von Dusburg yes. is when you see like the, the squares that you see over on the left here that are the yellow, red, and blue, and it has the black, and sometimes they're green in there. Um, that's the distigial, which stands for the style. It's very kind of symmetrical. And so what I, yeah. I love about the Bauhaus is that it, it, it is a unique style, but it also is open to exploration. Um, yeah, and being like the point. free spirit, uh, this is a story for you. The Bauhaus, some of the teachers there, like told the students to like be vegan, be vegetarian, and they needed to take sound baths and like cleanse their auras before they came to class. And like the Bauhaus I was love it. super experimental, uh, but it was really oh, cool wow. to kind of marry the idea of school and learning with the idea of like play and experimentation. So uh, yeah, the, the Bauhaus was really weird and crazy, but it has some really, really cool history. I think that needs to come back. That's pretty killer. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm not ready to be vegan, but we can try it. <laughs> All right. So moving right. forward, mid twenties, what happens in the mid twenties? Wow. Guys, here's a tidbit. You could stump a lot of your design friends with leave it to Mr. William Dwiggins. This is the guy who first used the term graphic design. It was the first time in 1922 that it was brought up and used. And it's really interesting because it's just as, it's just very similar to what we go through now when we try to explain to non-designers what we do. And all that time designers were struggling to explain that to non-designers. And it, this is exactly what this, and is he not like the first ever like creative director? I mean, look at that hairdo, that collar. Uh, this guy was rocking it in 1922. I yep. just love this story. I literally saw him and I was like, yeah, his name's definitely William Dwiggins. Like that feels yes. right. <laughs> that feels right for, for what he looks like. Um, so continuing on for there, we're moving through the Roaring Twenties. There's all kinds. There's the Bauhaus movements happening. Uh, we have um, Art Deco happening at this time. Uh, the Vienna Secession is like in that mm -hmm. zone style. Versacrum is being published. There's all kinds of varying styles uh, happening in design. And then eventually we ran. We ran. We land in the 1940s. Oh, oh, great! With Paul Rand, man. Tell us about Paul. We Rand. land on Paul Rand. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, it all started with this guy. I think for me too. Like I remember seeing this in history books and looking, and it, uh, I think it was the first thing you can look at and under and look at that and go Westinghouse ABC. Like you, it was tangible stuff that has still stood the test of time. And in 1947, he published his thoughts on design book. And this is where he posted his theories and his ideology and everything when it came to the thoughts on design, which were like largely shaped in the future of everything that we did in the graphic design industry. And I just love this, this look at this stuff, how timeless uh, his work is. And to think that this was back in 1947 where he was starting and had a book, you know, Gosh, I, I, I think it's so inspiring for any of us to look at this and be like, what a great catalog 
right? He yep. has put together. Yeah, and the same thing kind of happened if we look at the work of Saul Boss as well. Um, there was a lot of story behind a lot of these pieces. Uh, there's a designer creative by the name of Anton Stankowski. Uh, yeah. If anyone can find a link of that. So Anton Stankowski is all about storytelling and his work here. Nick, I'm going to cut to us for a second. I'm going to look this it. up. So Anton Stankowski was all about telling a story with his work with like the least amount of words, if that makes any sense. Um, sure. Stankowski design. Well, I'm so, curious to see what this looks like. Yeah, yeah, his whole thing was that he wanted to communicate invisible processes through design and complex thoughts. So let me come back over here. So this is some of Anton Stankowski's work. Um, and he would tell stories, but visually, right? And Ooh, so a yeah. lot of these things are like, oh, man, there is a story happening here. There's a process happening here. Uh, but it's told through these visuals. Uh, he has one piece that's very specific. Let me see if I can find it. Let me cut back to our faces real I quick. I love that everyone can have maybe a different interpretation of the story that he's trying to tell in those. Like some look like balance and order some look like chaos yep some look like tweaks and twists and stuff so like it's kind of neat to see like what the heck was going on there yep this was an ad that yeah. he did for a power company about like the the currents running through each other Ooh, yeah um, he did another ad that i'm trying to find real quick that was basically for a heating uh a heating company and it is the most interesting like wow. use of shape to tell the story Someone um, showed me that. I've seen that somewhere. Right, and it start. It has blue on yeah. one side, and then it has uh, something in the middle, and then goes to red on the other side, and it's using all of those kind of devices that we use in design to tell a story, which is what we're oh, talking about. We might have done that in the was it the hieroglyph hieroglyphics uh, episode back we, in the day. We may have done that. I yes. think you showed that. And yeah, thank you, Elizabeth Mott, really looking cool at Anton Snuskowski. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, so yeah. let's hop back in, Perfect. Nick. Uh, moving on from Paul. Thanks, Paul. Into, this is a big jump. This yeah. is a big jump. This is into the like, general modern era. Literally from 1950, it hasn't changed till now. But you, what you can, the reason this was kind of clumped together was once this digital era hit, everything changed. Like other than the printing press, think of the, the, the drastic impact that digital art has had. Everything from the first Photoshop release being happening uh people having video machines in their home cable television all these things the mass adoption of this led to the advancement so much and it was basically look at we're still in it now and it's ever changing on a daily basis with new technology new things here and there new screens in our lives and that adapt adaptability of it is crazy to think about how that works and it's not even printed it's just delivered electronically yep yeah. more fun stories from history since we have mtv here as an example uh, mtv was one of the first to create like a visual language for their brand uh and they had their logo right and yeah i remember uh they used to have these identities to where they'd just be like weird cut-ins and it would be like their logo oh, but yes. weird stuff would be happening and so at one point, one of the art directors went into like the actual tech room where they did the broadcast from and put up one of the logos and then just started cranking buttons and pushing different levers and seeing what he could do to distort the videos to create these unique different kind of looks of that logo. Um, and I remember reading a story that they actually like locked the doors because they didn't want other designers to go see what he was doing wow. from like that. He's like, oh, no, he's like messing up the brand. And it ended up being part of that MTV brand that nothing sacred. It's all all kind of you can blow it up you can piece it together that it's more about the attitude and more about the story behind the logo than the actual logo and so i love that that's yeah. the dawn of that like it's so much more about the story than it is about just like showing a cool well, logo yeah and you can look at the mtv outline version and the fact that how that was built was a vessel and it was meant to be like an empty aquarium and what you fill it with or what you skin it with is the versatility of it and I was talking with, you know, Sean uh, Heisler, he did the TBS logo, which is kind of in the same vein. He came and spoke to my class and was talking about the same idea. And for TBS to be able to tell a different story with all of their, because of their variety, they have everything from sports to comedy to drama to, you know, you name it. They could take the logo and tell whatever story they want by the flexibility of it being an empty vessel. And 
MTV just what an incredible, you know, example to show how that it really even started. Yep, Great. absolutely. And going on to the next slide, you guys are going to get a little preview again at my process, this tiny little dot that's hanging out up here so that I could measure the sizing for the next slide. So there just know you, you guys get to see behind the curtain. Uh, no, no secrets <laughs> here at Office Hours. Uh, so we talk about storytelling we talked a lot about design history and all of that is important mm -hmm. because everything every one of those pieces every one of those movements is trying to tell a story and when we're yes. working with brands when we're creating visuals it's important to tell that story why nick is the question why three big reasons you can really narrow this down to so many more but when you grab attention the best way to do it is a relatable story if i can see something and instantly relate to it because i can go oh I either aspire for that or I've been there or some some element that's of common interest, it will grab your attention more than something without that storytelling thing. Sometimes you can even see something amazingly created and designed, but if there is no storytelling behind it, will it actually grab your attention? The second one oh, is the sorry, idea let that me it, oh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I think, do it. Yeah. I think that... Um... We talk about this a lot when we talk about case studies and showing off your work is you have to have context, right? You have to have a context to your work and you just said it. It can be amazing, awesome work, but if it doesn't tell a story, then it, it kind of doesn't matter. And so having that context helps to tell the story. And we've told people to put in their case studies like, oh, it's a, it's a jeans brand and here's the logos that I did and here's the packaging. Yeah. And we've told you literally just put a picture of someone on a mountain in jeans because it's yeah. about telling that story, not necessarily Ooh, just like, showing Where is work. that? Yes, what, exactly. What's happening, right? Gosh, you fill in the blanks. Like you become the, the person that tells the story in between what they're telling. Yes, and as we get to a little bit further in presentation, we talk about how to build a story. I think keeping in mind, yes, if you're doing something that's not design, it's still the same way to tell a story. But if you are building a case study or something, I think that this yeah. structure of telling a story is going to be super helpful to you uh, to think in terms of visuals. Okay, second exactly. point. Tell us yeah, about money. We want to we want to sell. Yes. That's ninety percent of what we're probably pushing in some way, other than like you know, cause related or uh, things for charity. But still persuasion, right? So someone's saying yes, no, paying or not. And the idea here is, if you want that story to sell, telling a better story makes that more of an actual chance. So this idea that we buy into something because it's something we want to be associated with, or like you said, that gene ad or whatever giving me something that speaks to me helps sell me better because I look at that and it's that aspirational thing that is just, I think sometimes one of the, the, the coolest v factors of what we get to do as being persuasion drivers when it comes to doing, you know, design. Yep, absolutely. And last but not least, your story sets you apart. Uh, we need everyone's story. I've heard a, a couple designers talk about designing with one Pantone color, right? If we all have the same Pantone oh, yeah. color, then it's not going to end up being anything. It's just going to be a big blob. Uh, but if we yes. have different colors to work with, different stories, different perspectives, that's when stuff starts to get really interesting. Uh, yeah. What do you yeah. think about that, Nick? Perfect. I, I'm, I'm the same, like you look at who has stood out, who is doing something that maybe you are aspiring to. Let's look at graphic designers and artists that we look up to. There's something that made them stand out. And I would bet it's probably the story in a lot of ways, the, authentic, the authenticity of the story, maybe even a better way to say it. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we're going to look at some examples here and then go back and talk a little bit about story structure and that kind of stuff. So let's Perfect. start out with some examples of good storytelling. Uh, Nick's found some really great ones for Ooh. us to look at. And I want chat to kind of chime in here because yes. I want you to see the difference. This is really interesting. This was just released uh, a couple days ago. And I think most of you in the States and maybe even abroad know of Xfinity. They are a cable company that provide almost everything now, right? I I don't get it in my area, but knowing you know your cable company, they offer your phone and your TV and gaming and internet and oh my gosh, cellular, you name it. So this was a look at their previous brand story. What is it? Give us some words what you see when you see this. What does this, what does this evoke, right? Like, I mean, I look at it quickly and see beige, brown. I see a little bits of color popping through and everything, but like, is this really telling a story in any it, way? What, is, what do you see when you see this? Like I literally saw it and it is like the visual representation of being on hold. Like that is yeah. all that I thought is like, this like looks like the feeling of being on hold and not because like you call and they put you on hold. I'm like, I, it could be any other company and it still would yes. make me feel like I was going to get put on hold somewhere. It just is corporate yeah, so got, generic, meh. 
we got Matt and generic. And here's another thing. Look at look at one individual's piece there. Hey, that you know, look at that product design of that thing in the top left. It's actually nicely designed. It's it's great. But one thing you can do when you're working with clients or your job, when you show everything in one big kind of taste, how the that's the true test, I think, right? Yep. So do you want do we want to show them the the revamped new look? No. Thanks for joining us today. But yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Bye, right. everybody. Yeah, bye, everybody. You don't get to see it. All right. The new revamp look. Ooh. And you can see they didn't even change the logo, guys. There, there's a very slight um, change in some, of the, in some of the typography. But they kept the leverage of this X that they used. And now just by – look at the lighting on the, on the product photography. Look at the vans that they have there that are kind of like in the middle above the big X. There's all of a sudden – I, I'm just getting this vibe of, ooh, I want to be a part of this company. There's energy, right? Wh what else? Like, what do you see that you see that kind of shines from this one? Uh, I love that they're telling that the X that's always been there now is telling a story, is saying mm. something, right? That it's like yeah. limitless. It's reaching. It's pushing to something new. And it was yes. just kind of a, a letter before. And now they're using it as an element that it's glowing. It's technology. It's connecting you to something. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's so interesting that it is all the same pieces with a different context and a different story around it. Yeah. And this is what you can do w w with your work and the things that you're doing. If there's an old project that needs, call it even a facelift, because it's not even, this wasn't technically the rebrand that we're used to, but to just give you better backgrounds and a more vivid color and the ability to have some glow and, and uh, man, it just does everything. So need to see it all in one. Love this idea, but the next one. Hold on, we I, have to, I have to pick up yeah, pick up with this. So you yes. see these little like tiles that they have over here with like their cool uh -huh. colors and the whatever. It it is literally killing me that the HBO one is not purple, the Prime one is not blue, the Hulu one is not green. Like you yeah. have all the colors of those brands. Please just do a brand appropriate colors in your palette. Can I can I take a guess that maybe for their maybe on the actual interface. It is what you were saying, but on their own collateral, did they want to promote kind of, you know, competitors of yes, them? Yes, maybe. 100%. I'm, still, right? I'm mad about it either way. I'm mad about it either way. I'll fight somebody. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Continuing on. This is great. This. this has been everywhere today. Yeah. Um, and I think that our friends uh, Armin Vit at Brand New did a full write up on this today, actually. I just saw it before we went live. Yeah, they have a link to the site. This is celebrating. Disneyland Paris's 30th anniversary. And again, I love these little things. Here's the most simple, delicate, light, but it still tells a story, right? You've got this beautiful icon. In fact, I saw Mickey first. I don't know about you guys, but I saw Mickey first with this. And then I was like, what is everybody freaking out over? You know, I'm like, I'm like, oh, wow, look at the 30. Like, this, this is... This is great. Yep. It's just classy. You know what's funny here is that like this is literally one of the first Photoshop tutorials that like everyone does. That it's like put a yeah. glow on it and then like change the colors with brushes and multiply. But yeah. the idea and the storytelling is so good that like you don't even think about that. That like it's not like, yeah, it's not cutting edge. Yeah, I that's get what the thing. Saying. Yes, it's like this mm -hmm. is not like a new innovative design. It's not like the thing. It's literally just such a good idea that I've forgotten that like this is actually student work, but it's yeah. like it's so good in its insight and having a story that like, it doesn't matter. And you just forget that you're like, Oh my gosh, this story it, here is amazing. You know, what's interesting too. It's not the typical Disney, um, confetti and, you know, streamers all over for a celebration. There's actually something very confident and almost like, you know, it's our 30th, you know, like, I like the hint of this, which is really uh, something totally unique and different. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And if you guys don't, uh, if you don't know about brand new, Nick, what is brand new? It's we've talked oh. about it as a resource before, but let's call it out. Yeah, brand new under consideration. If you're not on there, um, it is a subscription based now, very cheap. I think it's two dollars a month, and you can pay it. I think uh, yearly. Uh, and they have a, they're looking at student plans as well. I was just talking with them the other day. So they're, I think they're putting out something for uh, education, which would be a little bit of a discount too. You get all of the up to dates on rebrands, on refreshes, on worthy logos to kind of look at and see. But more importantly, I love that they give you the case study. Yep. all the time. Yeah. And that's what we, you know, you, if you know us, we, that's what we push. We love a good case study. And also Armin, uh, who runs that 
is one of the best writers, I think, in the design industry. So if you guys want yeah. help with like copywriting, he's a really good writer. Just go read their articles and be like, oh my goodness, this is how you do it. Um, yeah. All right. Very so, witty. Very witty. <laughs> everyone take a mental picture, <laughs> mental picture of this, of what's happening on the screen, because we're going to come back to this idea, but not in a, not till a little while. Uh, all right, Nick. That, sorry, that was such, like Ooh. literally no segue there. Just keep this in your brain. You. I'll come back to Boom. it eventually. Nick, next and thing. now, <laughs> I saw this the other day, and I had to. It was an advertisement for this new gray whale gin. This is a capture of just six slides from their Instagram feed, and I was not surprised because when I saw the commercial for it, I was like, I loved everything about it. I love that turquoise. I love the white on turquoise. I was like, oh, this just says California. I'm sure a lot of you uh, that are from California know this is the vibe. This is what everyone's aspiring to have in the California look. But then I went and checked out their website. Ooh, let's look at I their mean, website. Storytelling beyond belief. I mean, it goes into the specialness of the ingredients and the where it was found. And then there's this beautiful parallax kind of vibe going as you scroll through it. And uh, let's take a quick look and see what it is yeah let's definitely take a quick look at this website which i had ready to show here on our stream which is called adobe office hours every this friday is called at 2 30 p.m there we go <laughs> all right we're here uh, we did it now look at this i mean i mean you're getting this story scroll down a little so oh no you'll start to see shh, 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 shh. sorry oh, go ahead yeah. No, oh, no, no, I meant there was music playing. You didn't hear it, but it oh, gotcha. So, oh, no, no, no. All right, perfect. look at this, these tactics and where the things are found. And as they're going up the California coast, they're giving you that little icon of where ingredients and things are and what inspired them. And I'm just sitting here, just like I'm watching it like it's theater, you know? It's it, and I, oh, that packaging is just. I don't know what it, what it was, but you know, when sometimes when something comes around and you're like, yeah, I'm an I'm an instant fan. Like yep. this, this is what I aspire every project that I do to have, yep. you know, and just this love is, it. This is doing a great job at what we're about to talk about in story structure. Um, it's Perfect. literally in the website telling you the structure, right? Uh, walking mm -hmm. you through what is the story of this brand? What is the story of this product? Um, yeah. And I love when that goes out of like the traditional setting, which we're going to talk about it, which is like an English sentence kind of story structure and oh, yeah. into like a visual that you're like, it's exactly the same thing. And you're like, yes, it's always the same thing. So love it. Here is our structure to telling a good story. Uh, this is from AP English classes that applies to history. If you're communicating a story, um, any piece of history has these five things because otherwise it wouldn't be notable enough to be history. Um, so an exposition. Exposition is the um, kind of laying out where you are, right? So it's getting, it's getting your bearings, putting you in a space, right? What year are we? What country are we in? What's happening in that? It's setting the context right? Then when you yes. continue on the story, there's a rising action. And the rising action is something happens that is then going to set the rest of the story. Uh, if you're talking about like a, uh, a Broadway show, a lot of times it was, it's called the I want moment, right? It's this moment you hit yeah. that says, okay, what, what is about to happen? Where are we going with this? Then there is the climax. And that's usually when the I want is paid off is like, cool, they've gotten the thing that, that they wanted to have. Or that is, you know, the war has been won. The movement has been victorious. The artist has been recognized. The climax is the top of the story. And then from there, we go to the falling action, right? Uh, this notable figure of history is then retiring and they are, you know, going back into their home. And yes, the it does have an age restriction. So I don't know if we can post the link. I agree, Wade. Thank yeah, you. Um, Thank you, Wade. It, but it exists out there. Uh, do a Google if you are of uh, legal age. So uh, falling action is kind of the... I like to call it like landing the plane when you're starting to land the plane. Yes. You'll hear us do a falling action at the end of the show when I'm talking and Nick is like, so that's all we got for this week. That's the falling action. Yes. Uh, and then the resolution I like to say is the part of the story that you stop and could say in conclusion, comma, and then that's the end. Uh, and so the resolution is kind of how everything comes together. So this is interesting because right. We talked about in stories and stuff, but Nick, Think about this uh, this structure in a case yes. study, right? It's literally mm. a case study. You're right, because it's kind of like discovery and objective, 
bits and pieces of process, yep. incredible work, yep. and then closing it out. Yep, client reactions, what was the following yeah. action, how does this get implemented, and then what was the kind of sell on that. So this is a great way across the board to tell stories. If you're telling stories from history, if you're telling stories of your projects, uh, any kind of yep. story structure, this is a great, great, great way to do that. And so keep this in mind as you're working through those. Um, we have just proven history and case studies are the same. Yes. Thanks for joining Office Hours. I know, right? We, I need a button that just like closes us out. It just like runs the, runs the loop. Um, all right. So let's talk about a story. And this is going to be a historical lesson as well as just a really fun story. Um, we're going to tell the story of Lucien Bernhard. And I think we've told this story before, but um, it's my favorite story to tell. So grab some popcorn. I'm going to take a drink. And we're going to hop into this story. And if you want to, uh, Google his name and start doing some research. I'm going to drink and then I'll nice. tell you the story. I need to set the scene with just a little bit there of quiet. There we go. Right. Ooh. And so, scene. Yeah. <laughs> go. Okay, so <laughs> this guy, Lucien Bernhard, um, he ends up going to an event. And I'm going to paraphrase this so don't look at him and be like, that's not how it actually happened. I'm going to make it a better story. We're, we're embellishing just a little bit to give you a better story. So... Um, he ends up going to this uh, this uh, furniture exhibition. It's like art and furniture um, somewhere in Germany. And uh, he goes and it's this big show and he sees all of this stuff that is super colorful. It's just gorgeous, uh, bright colors like he's never seen before. And he's super inspired. And so he goes home and he decides, uh, it's been described that he was drunk with color. Uh, and so he mm. goes home. Gets a whole bunch of paint, a whole bunch of colors, and just starts like painting stuff different colors, right? He's like, boom, walls, done. Uh, let's do the doors. Now let's do the ceiling. Let's do the chandelier. Let's paint the couch. Let's paint the floor. And he paints all of this stuff in his house, all these different colors, because he is just obsessed and inspired with the colors that he's seen. Well, the problem is it wasn't his house, like he lived with his parents. And so his parents got back and saw what had happened and were like, you're done. This is crazy. Get out. Yeah. And he's like, I can't stop color. Um, so then went off and started to be a little bit of a struggling artist. Um, and Lucien saw an ad for Priester Matches uh, and thought, you know what? I'm an illustrator. I could definitely do a poster and illustrate uh, and create something really cool for Priester. So he sat down and started uh, working and he had all these colors and he said, okay, maybe I'll have uh, like a cigar and then some matches on a little ashtray on a table and maybe some like somebody's dancing in the background and he makes this great piece and then he starts to think, how can I tell this story more efficiently, right? Visually, right? How can I tell the story of this product more efficiently? He's like, maybe we yeah. don't need the people dancing in the background. So he paints over them. And then maybe we don't need the table. He paints over it in black. And then maybe we don't need the cigar. He paints over it. And then ends up with this image that you see here that is just two, two matches with the name of the product. Everything else got edited down. So he decided, I'm going to tell the story by just saying the thing. I'm going to tell the story as efficiently as I can and as visually as I can without having other details. Um, so he sent it off to the contest and uh, it got to the contest and immediately got crumpled up and thrown in the trash. Uh, but one of the judges of the contest came in and saw it and said, why, why is this not in the running? This is the best one we have and picked it up. And he ended up winning the contest, getting money, and then became one of the most influential designers of the era because he was so efficient in being able to tell stories using just a few elements. So interesting, right? That's the history story yeah. of Lucy and Bahard. And I want to kind of transition to two more things with that. And the first is this. Uh, it was kind of the dawn of this area known as the Placat still, which is up there. And you mm -hmm. can research the Placat still. Um, it is often is known as the Bernhard formula. Um, and Nick, if you ever have a student do this, you can call them on it now. Uh, if they oh, ever totally. turn in something right, that is just like a flat color, the name of the product, and then an image, uh, it is called the Bernhard formula. And what yes. that is, is just like you can see here. So uh, cool type. Uh, of whatever the company name is, a flat background color, uh, flat planes of color, no real texture or anything, and then an image of whatever the product is. And so I wanted to show these three because they're all from different eras. Then we go on the right, that's uh, Lucy and Bernhard, old, old, old. I believe the left is uh, from the beggar staffs, which is like 20-ish mm -hmm. years future. 
And then the middle is the iPod ads from the 2000s, right? These are all the exact yeah. same things, all the exact same ideology, but history tends to repeat itself and it comes back. And those ideas of the Bernhard formula, we see iPod, we see flat color on the background with a twist. We've got some texture in there and then we have the yep. product shot, right? Super simple, same idea. Yeah. With that I love said, the way they I love the way they did it. It, it. To me, it's like the evolution of the style and the and the exact action there. Yep. So with that said, and keeping it relevant, um, not only is the Bernhard formula of having right flat black, flat planes of background, right flat colors, mm -hmm. we have the product name and then an image of the product. Look what happened this week. It's the exact there same thing. It's the Bernhard formula repeating itself in history. That image, that's why I wanted you to burn it in your brain because it literally is the Priester matches ad. Yes. It is literally, yes. it is Mickey, it is the name, and then it has that 30 kind of hidden away, which is an extra nod, but this is exactly the same technique. It is the essence of the Bernhard formula applied with a really smart twist of being able to do the 30 and the Mickey in there as well. Yeah, these. it's so neat that these principles are somewhat alive and you don't, most of the time we don't even know it. And it's neat that you, you have the knowledge and bring these things out because it's so good to know where these things are structured and, and really from in the beginning. Yep. It's kind of neat. Yep. Yeah. You know? uh, and we've got about, we got 15 minutes. We can do some stuff. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do with history. I've told you to do these three things before. If you are creative, if you are not creative or you are doing botany, if you are a masseuse, I don't care. Do these three things, examine the past, <laughs> consider the present and create the future, right? Look mm. into what's happened and then figure out how does that relate to the world around me now and then make something new. Dictate what the new future is going to be. I think that history becomes irrelevant if it doesn't influence the future of things, right? Yes. Um, is there is there like a word for the opposite of history? Right? Because um, history is everything that's happened in the past. Like it would just be like still like it would be like future events. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. honestly, the opposite of history. Is that what you're saying it's now? Yeah. Is, is, is future. I don't know. I would think Sorry. the opposite of history means like nothing's moving. Nothing's changing. There's just nothing. It'd be That's stillness. True. Like, right. Like history is everything. Like yesterday was history. Yes. How about so, this? Go make yeah. history. Do that. Look yeah. at history and then go make history. Uh, those are the two things we want you to do. And what we, would you, what would you say you could create the future with? Like, I'm just curious, like what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind as far as if you go through that equation that would inspire you? Oh, I, I, we talked about this before the show and I can't talk about it on air, but I, I yeah. have an idea that I'm working on. Um, yeah, that will probably come out next year, but I always look at how to disrupt things. I'm very much on the revolt side of the kind of turns of history. Yes. Um, yes. I'm not super great about like, oh yeah, let's adopt it and iterate on it. I'm like, what if we took everything on the table here and we just like Flip. flipped the table and then like set it on fire and then like saw what happened, yeah. right? There's yeah. a lot of those meetings. It's like, okay, cool. Let's move the pieces from this table to that table and over here. And I'm like, set it on fire, like blow it up and see what happens. Um, and so that's my approach. What's yeah. your approach to creating uh, history? I'm, I'm more on that. Like what hasn't been done in either convenience technology in, in process or something that is new, like, um, I just, oh, just great interview. I heard the uh, Richard Dyson, is that his name? The guy that started the Dyson uh, vacuum company. Yes. Um, he's on the Tim Ferriss podcast this week. If you guys are looking for something great to listen to this weekend, take a listen. He's genius and he talks about how accidents led to future products. And again, it's very similar to what we're seeing. Like you could be digging deep into something, but you discover something that becomes uh, a whole new way of doing something that you were already doing by accident in a way. And that's the kind of stuff that uh, just in excites me about being a creative more than anything. Yep, you absolutely. Know? And and Elizabeth Mock says chaotic energy, Andrew. I tell you guys all yes. the time, I I live on chaotic energy. That's just how my life works. <laughs> uh, all right, Nick, we've got about 10 minutes left. So let's do a couple things. Uh, yeah. Let's do our student of the week. And as always, if you guys want to nominate someone to be student of the week, Nick, where can they do that? That would be on our Discord channel, so you could definitely get right in on there and uh, let us know. Put in a link, uh, preferably Behance would be great to see, and that's a great way we can share it with you guys. Yes, and 
Watch, watch what I'm doing right now, chat. This is for you. Oh, this is oh, for you. Oh, there we go. This? Our deck is going in to Discord so that you guys can have it. Uh, nice. And yes, Nick just did the emoji of me flipping a table. Thank you. So there's a there bunch of links, <laughs> relevant, uh, basically show notes in the Discord here that you can click through and learn more about. There also is the documentation if you want to go ahead and uh, follow along with our presentation. But join our Discord. It's a great place to be. Yeah, uh, there's fun people in there. Um, all right, Nick, with our last few minutes, here's Let's what get into I it. would like to do. And that is oh, highlight show our, our student of the week. There you go. Yes. Who and we got? If you want to, if you want to nominate someone, sorry, I keep stalling. If you want to nominate someone, do it in discord. Okay. We're not going to talk anymore. Here's our student of the week. It is drum roll, please. Barbara is Saiva. Is is Saiva? Is Saiva? Essa Eva. Essa Eva? Essa Eva? Essa Eva? Essa Eva. Essa Eva. Barbara. Oh. Barbara. Wait, um, can, can I just look at look at the picture and the background header and this connection going there? Oh, yes. Let's pull it over. Oof. Yes. So this is incredible work. Uh, absolutely love it. And again, found on Behance right here. Uh, Wade, I'm going to let you look at this link. Behance.net slash V-A-R-U-U-S-H-A. I'm not good at getting way yes. before the show, but um, this is some awesome work. And I want to look at this pigmental uh, because it's incredible. And again, a lot of this is in language that we don't understand, but I love looking at that because we have to rely solely yes. on the visual communication. Um, this works amazing. Nick, do you want to kind of talk through Ooh. the vibes that you're seeing and kind of what you think about it? Okay. <laughs> wow. This has got a little like Keith Haring kind of... Um... This is a great branding of hair color studio. Let's scroll through a little bit and see what we got. Oh man, this first Im or the second image of just everything on the pink background right. and then the tubes. Oh my gosh, this is um wow. Like I'm looking at this and going, I would think the first thing is if I did this, I would think this is so busy, too complicated, but then yet it has this focus and this unity across the entire board. What do you think, man? Yeah, this is wonderful. I, like I'm trying to track it back because we've talked to, about history so much. Uh, oh, this shirt is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, I'm trying to track it back to like historical movement balloons. I've Nick to this day the amount of work that I have seen, and I have never yeah. seen balloons in a case study. That is this is my favorite thing that's ever happened. There's your there's your game changer, that's right? It. Look at Dude, that. I'm putting the logos on balloons. Um, mm -hmm. So trying to pick out and this is what I love is when we can pick out different movements that have happened yes. in design different kind of historical moments and they're coming together, right? We see some Bauhaus yeah. here, absolutely with yep. the colors and the shapes. Um, we see a little bit of distigial that, that MTV vibe too, right? Yeah. The, uh, the whole idea. Right? Yeah, it's got a little bit of that distigial, like very kind of geometric in places. And then it has a lot of, like you said, that kind of Keith Haring, hand drawn, uh, almost going back to like a twist on a renaissance kind of thing. It's got the like kind yeah. of swirls and curves, but nothing's feeling ornate. It's just feeling kind of busy. Um, this is very, very interesting. And a little art deco with the chevrons that are coming through. And don't forget the animation happening on the very first image. I mean, like, again, there's motion going on and everything. Um, this is wonderful. And this is a student work. Oh, right? my goodness gracious. Right? That is fantastic. Um, wow. Yeah. It's gonna so gonna good. do a little work on the on the, the the presentation and the portfolio this weekend. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be putting every project that I have just into uh, the context balloons. of balloons. Yep. I love. I have this is only wonderful. had balloon this clients is... from now. Yeah, there, there you go. This is great. Wow. Do you want to look at something else? Uh, yeah, let's look at one more thing. Uh, what do you one. want to pick? Um, we could look at logo folio. Let's do Take it. A quick look there. We love a good logo folio. This is, I think this is a nicely done one where I like that it has the separation, the date. Um, I'm, I'm digging that vibe. I love seeing particular designers from other countries. I think it's really important for us to see that because they're telling different stories over there, <laughs> like honestly, yes. than where you live. So looking at, I'm always inspired by seeing other um, solutions because there's, you see things here that you're like, wow, we're just not... Like you're not seeing a lot of over here. Yeah, and going back great. to uh, Bauhaus, this is something that's called an implied grid. 
Uh, if you mm -hmm. ever want to implement this into your design, it's basically using a visual grid that doesn't exist, right? So we can see that there are two columns here in this image, but there aren't actually two columns. Uh, there's no line separating. And so doing an implied grid uh, is something like that. So you can kind of break yeah. them off. These are really good. Oh, wow. Well, that Ooh. logo inspired an entire um, uh, weirdo, another color studio salon. There's a case study for that one. I love that Vitamilk one. Oh, these are just wonderful. Yeah. Look at that. Very cool. That's Very cool. Yeah, so this is great work. So go give, go give a follow. Wade just dropped the link in there for you all to follow along. Um, and Nick, Yo. let's do... Um, what do you want to do with this last five minutes? I, I know you want we could probably squeeze in a question or two, but one thing I thought was interesting, she did in her links all the time she was um, featured somewhere. And I thought that was a really cool idea. You can see those links right under the, that, that right there. You can click on one or two, like the branding source when she was featured on that website. It goes to her in, the Instagram page where she was featured. So oh, that's little actually things like really that. interesting. Yeah. That's a really nice touch, guys. I really like that a lot. That's really interesting. Who's sliding into uh -huh. my DMs? Y'all need to calm down. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, right, so we, let's, we got some quizzes you want to try? Let's let's maybe ask some questions. I think it would be interesting. And yeah, I think let's do a combination of two things. We do need to do a preview of next week, but let's ask one question. Yep. We'll do a giveaway, uh, and we we will have office hours prizes. They are they are almost in existence. Is the honest answer. Uh, I we haven't done the art yet, but they are coming. They're on the way. We just need to finish a couple things. We promise. Uh, all right, Nick. Let's ask a question from Design History. Um, yeah. And I think this just is got? a good story. Let's see who remembers this. It's a, it's a bit specific, uh, but the story is basically there was a historical figure that. Uh, at the dawn of uh, Caslon and Baskerville having a feud, right? So we had uh, Caslon uh, making these tight faces that were serifs. We had Baskerville that was a little bit of a, a tighter serif. Uh, they were two people that designed those with their namesakes. And the public had a hard time adopting Baskerville. They said, oh, it hurts my eyes. And so this historical figure, this is Jeopardy 100%. This historical Ooh. figure would print documents in Baskerville and then tell people it was Caslon and gauge their response of how much they loved it because they thought it was Caslon, even though it was Baskerville. So this is a, wow. a typographic prankster from history. If anyone knows this answer, like I'm just going to like give you prizes. Uh, so if you can figure that answer out, I'll give you some prizes. And while we do that, Nick, let's talk about what's happening next week. What is the preview for Office Hours next week? Next week is the math episode, I'm assuming, correct? Yes, we, next week we yes. are talking about math. What are we going to be getting and into? It's, it's going to be hands-on, right? Everything about grids and how what we could do as far as mathematical geography and geometry, how that works in your setup. I, I'm, I'm curious, too, because I, are you much of a grid user in a lot of your stuff? I uh, we're slide showing now. I tried to do the right button and I did it and then it was the wrong. It was too much of the right uh. button. Uh, yes, I do do a lot of grids and I also um, do a lot of charts, surprisingly. So we'll show you how to lay out really? charts in InDesign. Uh, if you're doing a bunch of numbers, we're going to need columns, rows, all that. And we'll also show you how to do like pie charts. We'll show you how to make a donut in Illustrator. It, it's made nice. for charts, but like, let's just make a donut. Why not? Um, Why not? And let's we'll show you how to do bar graphs, yeah. all that fun stuff, how to synthesize within Illustrator. Um, also, I'm just going to show you how to do math in your boxes. If you are trying to do three different boxes across the artboard, you can literally yeah. do math in the dialog boxes in Illustrator. Not a lot of people know that. Uh, so instead of doing the calculator on your phone, you can just put like three times nine and it will put in 27 for you, uh, in the dialogue. Boxes, oh, that's right. Right. I, I love little things like that. That's great. Right. And Perfect. yes. Okay. Mercurial, Mercurial Forte. Got it. We've talked about it before. So it is Benjamin Franklin was the prankster. He actually, uh, I believe had the, uh, declaration of independence printed in both Castle and Baskerville. Um, but he was the one who would go around and said, Oh, people hate, hate Baskerville. It hurts their eyes and he'd show them something and he'd be like, oh my gosh, I love it. That's Caslon, right? And he'd be like, yeah, it's Caslon. And then it would Isn't actually it funny that there was a war of fonts like that? Like, it's just so funny. Right? And especially hear. with Benjamin Franklin. Yeah. Like, you don't think about that. But, I mean, the, the overlaps, and that's what I love is the wormholes in history. To where you hear a story mm -hmm. about something that doesn't connect with something else. And then you realize that was all happening at the same time and it's all relevant to each other, right? 
Yeah, and how well it's like VHS and beta. Like someone had to win, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. So uh, with our last minute, we do want to tell you about the thing that is coming up in a couple weeks, and that is Adobe Max. Go get registered. Nick, do we want to give any kind of clues to what might be happening with office hours, or do we just want to wait till next week? I, I think a clue would be commentary, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, is that a like good one? funness. Yeah, like maybe funness. some maybe some headsets will be involved. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh maybe, yeah, maybe a jacket or two. I don't know. So we'll keep giving you some clues. We'll have probably more details for you at the end of next week. But stick around, join our Discord, uh, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for watching yes. Office Hours. We'll be back next week with another episode about math. Nick, do you want to say something while I close this out? Just say any words. You got have 20 a seconds. great weekend, everybody. Love it. Bye, Can't everybody. Wait to see you guys next week. Bye, bye.